Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. This, this message is a little different. It's actually broke up into three different parts. I don't actually have a, 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 a scripture uh, that we're going to start with today. And uh, we're just going to uh, talk about a very good topic and it's called Renew. That's the topic of today. It's Renew. So maybe hit your neighbor on the shoulder and just tell them it's time to renew. Amen? And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a different message, but I, I want to talk to you really on the topic uh, of reproducing. That's what I want to talk to you about, about reproducing. Amen? And uh, in, in the context of, a Christ, of our Christian walk, in, a, in the context of our relationships with others. Amen? And uh, I want to I start with the first word. It's called new. New. N-E-W. New. Has anybody ever had anything new in their life? <laughs> I think all of us can say yes, okay? I had a new pair of socks once. I had a, uh, I had a, uh, a new wife once. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's the only wife I ever had. She was good. She still is good. She's awesome. And uh, I want to look at, uh, I want to take from uh, this, this word new, I'm going to take it from 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18, which is our, uh, a very familiar verse. Uh, actually, when, 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 whenever I preach, I often will reference, uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, old things pass away. Behold, all things are become new. And then in verse 18, it says, all things are of God who hath reconciled to us to himself by Jesus Christ and, uh, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. He has given us the ministry of of reconciliation. And I, I like that verse 18 because it really explains verse 17 a little bit, even in the purpose in the plan of God, uh, is that, that God wanted to make all things work together for good, amen, in my life. And he's, he's taking, and, he, and, he, and, he, and it's God's plan to reconcile us to himself. I, I think that's important. That means God wants us to be with him, amen. That's what that means. And I know that he wants us to be with him. I, I, I don't know sometimes if we really think about that a lot when we're, when we're walking through our life and we're, 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 we're going to work or we're coming home from work or we're having an argument or we're not having an argument or we're having a great day. We're at the park. We're, we're playing. We're doing whatever it is we do. Uh, but I don't know if we fully understand that God wants to be with us. Amen. And, it, and that's a really, good, a really good truth that you can stand up on this morning because God, gee, God, it's his desire, it's the desire of God for us to be with him. And yet we feel alone, amen? We do, we feel alone a lot and we feel like we got to do all of these things by ourselves. And then, uh, but I want to say this word, the word is new and uh, uh, I, I like it, I like it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, in other words, he puts a preface on uh, uh, he, he is a new creature, right? He says, if any man be in Christ. So, so there's the preface. In other, in other words, I must be in Christ. In other words, I, I have to get saved. I got to come to a place where I say, Jesus, I'm, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. Uh, I want you to have mercy on me. Come on, have some grace in my life. And, and it's, it's almost the preface. So I, let me ask you a question. Does anything look new to you? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you right now that often in life, we go through life and we don't really think anything looks new. Matter of fact, we get to the point where we say things like, I remember in the good old days. <laughs> I remember what it was like way back then. I remember when I was young. I, you know, I remember when I remember when I had money. I remember when I had favor. I remember when someone liked me. I, went, I remember when my jokes were funny. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I used to be able to make my wife laugh. Now she doesn't laugh at all because <laughs> it's not new anymore. And, and see, that's what happens to us, I, I think, too often is that we, we focus on the good old days and we forget about the now and the moment because really that's exactly where, where, where our life is being lived now, in this moment. We hold in our hands this morning a now moment. This is the moment, amen? There's not an ever, ever going to be another moment like this moment, amen? Like this moment. I need this moment right now to be good, amen? I need this moment now to be awesome, Amen? And then it says, if, if, if any man be, I, I mean, I could preach a whole message just on those words right there, if any man be, if, if we would just be, right? If we would just be in Christ, 
If we would just be a Christian. If we would just be in the love of God. Amen? If we would be there in that moment. If we would be there right now. I mean, I wonder what would happen to our worship, honestly. What would happen to our worship if we would just be in the moment? And forget about all the other things that clutter our minds. And really just be in the moment and say, you know what, God? I'm here now. And I want, I want to, I want to just, I want to look into your eyes. I don't want to look at your hands. I don't want to look what you're going to give me or not give me. I don't, I don't want to look at anything. So I just want you to know I love you this morning. I just want you to know that today is the day that I'm going to lift up and exalt your name. Today is the day that I'm going to worship you. Today is the day I'm going to forget about the past and I'm going to forget about the future. And I'm going to look right now in this moment. I'm saying, I just love you, Lord, because I understand that there's, there's something at stake this morning, right? In my relationship, has a, I have a stake in my relationship with God, amen? And with what he, what he wants to do. I want to be in him. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. In other words, we are created. In other words, the creature means I'm a creature. I was created, amen? And I think it's, that's a powerful statement right there. The, the fact that identifying that I have been created, Amen. I am created and God, God has a purpose and a plan and a, and, a, and a place for me. And he's moving me along that, that, that through the struggles, come on, through the struggles of life, he's moving me along and he's making me into what I should be. Sometimes when God, I think it's great to look at a picture because when God, God, God does stuff in our life, sometimes he pulls out the blue paint and he starts painting blue on this thing. And we go and we're going, God, why am I so blue? Why is this blue? And then he pulls out the red, and, he, and, and then he pulls out the, the black, and he pulls out the, the whatever those colors are. And all those colors don't make sense when they're, when they're happening, but when you step back and look, God is making a masterpiece, amen? He's, he's, he's making something perfect and something great and something awesome out of us. And old things have to pass away, though. Old things have to pass away. Old things have to pass away. i got to be willing to let go of something old in order to receive something new in my life. Amen? Amen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old, thing, old things have to pass away. Behold, all things will become new, but only when I let go of something old. Amen? And that's why I told Joanne goodbye. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I said, <laughs> she's getting old. No, I'm just kidding. But we have to let go of something old to receive something new. Amen? And I'm going to tell you right now, we got some habits. All of us got some habits that need to, we need to let go. Okay? And, and we, have to, we have to make new habits, right? We have to take hold of... And I'm going to tell you one of the greatest habits you can do as a Christian is begin to worship Him. Right? Not just on Sunday mornings, but every single day of the week, find time to worship Him. Find time to spend five or ten minutes. I don't care if you're driving in the car. I, I think I said that a couple weeks ago. I turn the radio off in the car, and I just worship as loud as I can in the car. I sing. And I say, I say, yeah, whatever it is, uh, maybe it's just Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, or, or maybe it's uh, hallelujah, or maybe it's majesty, or maybe it's uh, my praise is the weapon. <laughs> <laughs> my voice is a weapon. I mean, come on, we got we got to start to begin to experience our worship alone with God. Yeah. Amen. Our alone time with God in order to have a corporate time with God get get greater, get get, get more awesome because if I didn't bring him with me, <laughs> come on, I'm not going to find him when I get here most likely, okay? Cuz he's here. He's here cuz I brought him with me this morning. Amen. And I know that he's here because I know you brought him with you this morning, but we must break out of some old things so that we can receive new things. Amen? Yeah. If I get a new thing, it's always awesome to get a new thing. Who knows that? I mean, whenever we get a new thing, I, I mean, I got, I got a, 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 a vehicle given to me. <laughs> it's a 2000 Dodge Durango. Okay, someone gave that to me. And... Uh, it needed some tires and brakes and stuff, but it was, it was new and it runs good. And uh, I was really excited about getting that. And I was excited to show people uh, this new thing that I got, you know, because the other thing I had was a 97, okay? So that's just three years newer, all right? And, and, and so far, uh, other than the smell, 
<laughs> that was inside the vehicle, it's been good. It's been good. It's been better. And I, it drives good. And, and I'm excited about the fact that I can get to and fro work and I can, uh, I don't have to worry about this winter because when I was driving before in the 97, uh, the wind would blow through the front windshield over the top of the rear view mirror and it, it would make, it would kind of get cold in there. It's a little drafty. And if you held your finger in the right spot, you could make it stop, but you had to hold your finger like that <laughs> on the window. You know, and I'm just saying that, that maybe that doesn't mean nothing to you guys, but it means all, all the difference to me. It makes all the difference to me in my life because you know what? Once again, God provided for me. Old Pastor Everett, God provided for him. Amen? And I can trust that, that, that whatever God is going to do in the future is going to be just as awesome as that. He's a providing kind of God, right? He is my provision. I can say that this morning, amen? And I can tell you for, of a truth that He is my provider. And I don't have to worry about what's going to come around tomorrow or the next day or the day after that, even though I am tempted off, often to worry and worry and fret about what's going to happen. And, and what I think is going to happen usually never does anyways, amen? <laughs> but... but but did you know that new things are awesome in relationships too? Did you ever notice that? Uh, often, uh, I've been married a long time, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've been married for 33 years, and, and it's so easy to get uh, boring and mundane and forget to explore the, uh, the person that, that I married and, and begin to find a new thing about her. You know, because you'd think after 33 years, there's absolutely nothing new that I can find. You know, but even this morning while we were up here practicing, I found out that I, I can't play the drums a certain way because I don't look good when I do that. And so she was concerned the way I looked and, and that I, was, I would be dignified uh, while I play the drum. And uh, you know what? I, I accept that because I know that she cares about the way that I look, okay? And that's, that's awesome. And uh, as long as she doesn't start putting makeup on my face, we'll be okay. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> But that would be a new thing too, all right? <laughs> okay, that would be a new thing too. And, uh, uh, <laughs> but you know, new things get old, okay? New things get old. Because sometimes when you get, when you notice a new thing about someone, you see it, you see, it's kind of cute, you know? But after a while, it begins, it begins to be a distraction, like, you know, how I play the drums. It begins to distract some, certain people when they're trying to play the, the piano. And so... <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, what, what was cute becomes distracting, but God, God will, will not ever, God, God is never, if we're willing, God is never going to waste our time. Amen? God is never going to waste our time. Sometimes we think that, you know what, I've wasted, my time's been wasted. I've been wasting my time. I've been wasting my time coming out into the middle of a, a forest preserve somewhere and, and, and listening to some, some goofy guy stand behind a music stand. You know, but you're not wasting your time, amen? God is doing a work, amen, in all of us, all of us as individuals, but most importantly, he's doing it in the body that we have become, amen? He's doing a new thing in us and with us and through us. But I want to challenge you this morning. Don't look down. Look up, okay? Look up. Look for the new thing, amen? You know, uh, I don't want to be comfortable anymore. I don't, I, you know what? Hmm. I, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say that like this. If, if you're comfortable, guess what? You're not growing. And God is going to bring you to a place where you're not comfortable. And when you feel uncomfortable, know this. You're growing. Amen? And that's exactly what we have to begin to identify in our life, in our relationships with others. we got to understand that, that uncomfortableness is only a sign that we are growing. Amen? And I, 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 want, to, I want you to know that. Amen? I want, to, I want you to think about that anyways. Amen? Did you ever, know, ever notice, when you, let me say one more thing, then I'll go on to something else. But whenever we think about the old things, the old days, right, our mind plays a trick on us. Because we only remember the good stuff. We never remember the bad stuff. We say, I remember when the good old days, when I used to, you know, you know I have the pogo stick jumping uh, record in the neighborhood when I was growing up. I used to jump, I don't know who anybody else jumped pogo, pogo stick, anybody? You, I, so, so I did, guess how many times I did, did you jump pogo stick? Okay, so I jumped, I, 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 I bet I beat you, I don't know, it's just fine. I know that, I have a note, I found it the other day in a, in a little, uh, I have a Bible bo a box, and in that box is a lot of little 
neat little things that I keep. And inside of there is a, is a little note, and it says the date. I can't remember the date right now, but I remember the amount of times I jumped on a pogo stick. It was 1,037 times without stopping, up and down. And they were counting because I had the record in the neighborhood, okay? 1,037 jumps, okay? And I want to tell you, that takes a lot of concentration and a lot of balance to continue to balance on that little pogo stick going up and down 1,037 times. And I'm going to tell you, that's amazing, isn't it? But I think that's awesome. But I'm going to tell you, I don't, as I know right now, there is not a job that someone actually pay me to jump on a pogo stick 1,037 times. So it really doesn't matter uh, for my financial future. It's not awesome. But I'm going to tell you, there's things in our life just as dumb as a pogo stick jumping record, okay, that nobody's going to care about but me after about 35 or 40 years or whatever has gone by. When I look back and I go, wow, that was amazing. And I can remember the day it was sunny. And all, like, all everybody in the neighborhood was like, wow, that's awesome, as I kept jumping and jumping and jumping in. I got that record and I wrote it down. Why would I write that down? I have no idea, but I know that was important for me to, to remember it today, maybe just to tell you that, that sometimes in life we think only about the good things or the, the awesome things that I did or didn't do, some pinnacle of, of uh, 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 awards, okay? But, 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 but I got to remember my mind is going to play a trick because I'm only going to think about what was good. I'm never going to think about the bad or the way I felt the day after <laughs> or, or the, the struggle it was in that moment or this or that struggle. I only think about the high moments and that's what we do. Uh, we always do that. All of us do that. But to receive something new, I have to let go of something old. So what I think might be right may not be right at all. And I want you to know this this morning, that Jesus is making us uncomfortable so that he can give us something new. Amen? Because that's who he made me, new. Right? The moment I got saved, he made me new. In other words, everything that I thought about and was and, and could have been is no longer, that's old. Amen? And so I need to embrace the newness. Amen? Embrace the newness. Embrace the newness every day, though. Okay? It says in the Bible, the mercies of God are new every day. Come on. Is my relationship renewed today with God? I want you to make it a priority in your life, okay? And maybe I'm telling you something you already know, but do it every day. Ask God. You know what, God? I don't know what I'm thinking about today that I shouldn't be thinking about or what I, what I think should happen that shouldn't happen. I want you to, to, to be God and just tell me what I need to do. No, where I need to go, what I need to listen to, what I need to, who I need to be today. Amen? Yeah. Let me give you another word. Renew. Renew. See, I'm already preaching a long time. I'm trying not to. I think that was like 15 minutes or so. Uh, 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 renew. Psalms uh, 51, verse 10 through 12 says, David is speaking. He says, creating me a clean heart. And he has a comma there because I think it's important to understand that David knew that his heart wasn't clean. <laughs> you ever think about that? David knew his heart wasn't clean. And then he says, oh God... See, because God is the only one that can change your heart this morning. It's the knowledge of who he is, and it's the grace and the mercy of God that will come in and impact your life. That's what changes you. In other words, your relationship with God will change you. <laughs> Amen? He's going to take the old and make it new. Okay? It says, create in me a clean heart, comma, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Hmm. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Uphold me with thy free spirit. One of, one of the greatest thoughts that I, I as I read the, those few verses there in Psalm, out of Psalm 51, 10, 11, and 12, is, is one of the greatest thoughts is that David knew the difference. He, he really did. He understood what it was before, and he understood where he was now, but he also knew where he needed to go. Amen? David understood that because he stood in the moment looking back at a regret and looking forward with a future, with hope, right? He had hope in a better future. And so, so as he stood there, because he had, he had done some bad stuff in his life, and he, he needed forgiveness. He had committed murder. He had, a, he, had, he had an affair. He had a lot of stuff going on there. But something was different in his relationship with God, and he knew it. Amen? And I'm going to tell you this morning, when, when my relationship with God is right, I know it. 
Guess what? And you know it too, amen? Because, and everybody around us knows it. The dog knows it. <laughs> the neighbor knows it. You know, the, the person that, that, that cuts us off in, on the way to work knows it because we know that, that, you know, yeah, they did what, what they did was wrong, but I can move forward because I'm okay. I'm not worried about what you did, okay, because I know what I did is right with God. And that's what we're supposed to be as Christians is light, salt, right? We're supposed to be the seasoning in the world, amen? The seasoning in the world. I need to be Christ to the world, amen? You know what? When Christ went around walking around talking, everybody didn't like him. <laughs> it's okay if everybody don't like you. It's okay. And you know what? Nobody, they didn't like Jesus either, okay? And, he, and Jesus even said that. If they, if they hung me on a tree and crucified me, you know what? They'll probably do something like that to you too. And we should expect that, and that's okay. But my... my who I am, my significance is not based upon what others think, amen? It's based upon what God says about me, amen? I can rest assured this morning that my identity is in Him, amen? My identity is in Him. The truth is, it is necessary for all of us to have a clean heart. It is. It's necessary. And you know, we all can do that right now in this moment. We can just say, Jesus, you know, come and forgive me my sins, and if I, if I do it, uh, with a right, with a, with the right attitude, right? My my posture is correct. In other words, I don't want to go sin again tomorrow. <laughs> uh, amen. My posture is correct, and I, I say, God, forgive me my sin. Plead the blood. I plead the blood over my life. And you know what? He, the, the, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness, not just some, all. Right? Uh, it, like like clean. Right? I, uh, when my when my life is washed with the blood, I'm clean like like white as snow. Amen. And I I have. I can I, I, I have my heart clean. You know, if, we, if our heart is clean, do you ever notice that, that, that David says it? He says, restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Because up out of my heart should come a joy bubbling out, right? It should be just a normal, natural occurrence for there to be joy in my life, amen? I shouldn't walk around with my face, <laughs> face looking down. I, I've said this a lot of times, but you know what we sometimes walk? Oh, when we get depressed or we get to thinking about what's going on in our life, we walk down with our, we're around with our head looking down at the ground. And that's all we do is we walk looking down, looking down, looking down. And, and Jesus is saying, look up, look up, because that's where your redemption is comes from. And that's where your identity comes from. And he, and, and he wants us to have a clean heart, a heart that doesn't have to worry about what it is that I did or they did or somebody else did. All right? So, yeah. I, I think it's relevant for us to, to think about this thought that Jesus, Jesus wants us to have a clean heart. I, he wants us to have a clean heart. He doesn't want us to have an unclean heart. Amen? He wants our, our heart to be clean. I, 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 I want to take this a little bit further, though, this thought, okay? And, and the thought is this. If, if I was created for a purpose, right, to have a clean heart. That means God has a plan for me and, and I should be doing something with my life that I was called to do, amen? And I, I, I think it's, it's, it's also interesting to notice that if, if God has created me for, for a purpose and I don't do the purpose God has created me for, what, what happens? I begin to bottle up the gift, amen? And I begin to feel yucky, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, it's like stagnant water. If you put water in a place and it doesn't move, uh, algae grows, stink happens, all kinds of nasty things, uh, mosquitoes and stuff and all kinds of stuff starts to grow in there. And I'm going to tell you that that's the same thing spiritually that will happen to us if we don't begin to flow. Amen? we got to begin to flow. Let, let, let whatever my purpose is flow out of my life. Amen? And if I would just start being a Christian... See, that's, that's really... What we're supposed to be is light and salt, right? That means every day I should let it flow, let it flow, let it flow. Don't just come to church on Sunday morning and expect God to fix it and then go about my business the way I did before I came into church, but let what's in me, let it out of me, amen? Let, it, let what's in me, uh, out of me. Renew the right spirit within me. Let me begin to, to flow, amen? I, I, I wrote this, this down, it's a little sentence. It says, uh, transformation transformation because see information 
when, when I speak this morning, you might get information, okay? Information means you take it, take it and you, put, you, you take information in. That's why it says in, right? It's, it's a formation that comes in me, right? Uh, a formation comes in me. But, but, but being a Christian is about transformation, okay? That's when I take information that I have in me and I take it, let it go out of me, okay? And so the, the, what, well, this is what happens. Transformation of my life will happen when, when I take what's in me and I take it to others, amen? So, so that's a flow. You see that flow? So I take in the word of God into me and it flows out of me to someone else. In other words, my dog might get the transformation before my neighbor gets the transformation, okay? But after my neighbor gets the transformation, someone else is going to get the transformation, and pretty soon they're going to understand that I am been made new, amen? And I am new. I'm a new creature, amen? Let, let me give you another word, a new, a new, a new. Uh, it sounds like you should say bless you right there, a new, <laughs> a new, <laughs> If, if I was at home right now, my cat would go, arr, arr. <laughs> every time I sneeze, he does and makes a funny noise. Uh, but in, in Ephesians 2 verse 10, it says, we are God's masterpiece, right? He has created us anew in Christ so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. <laughs> I always love this thought that God is a planner. God is a planner. I love this thought because God planned for us right? He planned for you, he planned for me, he planned for our situation, he planned for all of those things. There's not a single surprise in the world we live in today that God didn't know was going to happen, all right? And, he, and each of us, each of us, not a single one of us, is, is uh, absent from that plan, amen? And God is, going, is trying to do a new thing, right? A new thing in me, through me, and, f and for others, amen? Not necessarily for me, it's for others, okay? My, what, I, what, I, what I speak up here, I don't speak, uh, I speak for others. I speak to be, a, to be a, a, a conduit, right, where God can begin to release uh, through, through my mouth, okay, which is not really mine, I'm not my own, amen? I'm his, and I begin to, to release the word so that something new can happen, right? <laughs> We are the new thing that we're looking for. We already have it. It's us. We're here right now. You are, I am, we are. We've been all created new, anew, anew. We are all his masterpiece, right? Uh, I put this on the fridge uh, at home uh, so Joanne could read it, right? That God created a good thing when he made me. <laughs> I just wanted to remind her, okay, that, that you know what? She, she's got a great thing living in her house, okay? <laughs> I, I want to re remind her that I am God's masterpiece, okay? And that he did plan for me, okay? And he, he, and, and he gave her a good thing, amen, when, he, when she married Pastor Everett. Do you ever notice, though, that often we relate everything to our carnal side? How we feel, how that person treated me, what's going on, what it looks like, what I see, how long I got to walk there, how hard it is to carry stuff in and out of the church building, how, how, how uncomfortable it might be when it's raining or cold. That's what we do. We relate everything to the carnal side. But the new thing God did is not necessarily carnal. It's spiritual. So when he gave me a new thing, he gave me something that I don't know about. I don't understand. Something that I, I carry with me, but I, I don't even know how to operate it. And we're expecting God to bless me the way I always get blessed before, the way I've always had my blessings. I, I want to give you a little story, if I can, because I want to go a little deeper with that thought, if it's all right. Hebrews 11, verse 5. Now, I want you to see this little story. 
Hebrews 11, verse 5, it says, by faith, Enoch was translated. I want you to think about the word translated for a second. I'm just going to keep reading. I want you to think about how many times the word translated happens. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And was not found because, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Let, let, let me just tell you, before Enoch was translated, he, by faith, right? By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Not by sight, not by feelings, not by any of those things. But, but look at what happened. Enoch was translated. <laughs> I, I, I know what it's like when I'm standing around and there's a lot of Spanish-speaking people and they start talking, 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 and I don't understand a thing, thing, thing. Okay? And there's a lot of talking. Like, like when, when, when Spanish speaking people speak, they speak a long time to say a little thing. Like I would say, it's, it's a nice day. They would say, it's, the sun is shining and it's bright and cold and blah, 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 day, okay? They say all that, okay? And I, it's just a nice day, okay? But I'm going to tell you, Enoch was translated. See, because I need a translator, amen, to understand Spanish, is it true? And sometimes there might need to be a translator for me to un for you to understand what I'm saying because sometimes you ain't going to understand what I'm saying because you know what I got circumstances and situations in my life that you aren't aware of. Okay, I've been through stuff that you don't even know about, and you know what you've been through stuff that I don't even know about. And sometimes we need a translation. Amen. And I'm going to tell you that God has come to translate us. In other words, take us from where we were where nobody understood, to a place where everybody can understand. And not just because I need them to understand how I might be feeling right now. They, they need to understand that there is a God in heaven. Amen? That can change a life, that can change a circumstance, that can fulfill a, a, whatever it is, difficulty that you might have in your life. I need a translator this morning. Amen? Amen? And, and Enoch was translated. I love this fact because even God, Enoch had to talk to God, to, to God enough so that he came to a place where he pleased God, right? And then Enoch didn't die. <laughs> a little death. He didn't die a physical death, okay? But he was not found. <laughs> and see, I, I, I don't know. I just look at it in a spiritual sense, okay? Are you still being found the way that you were before you were saved? Or are you translated? Have you been made new? Have you been remade anew? Amen? Because see, if, if you go there just a little bit, if you go there just a little bit and you look, you'll see that, that God, I think I, I think I skipped it. God is looking. God is looking to remake something in your life. Amen? He wants to make something new in your life. He, he's not happy to leave you alone. In other words, God did a good thing when he made you. Amen? He made you just right, just perfect. Carnally, he made you just perfect. Okay? There's not a mistake in anything that he did when he made you. Amen? And I'm going to tell you this morning, when you get born again, he just remade you. Okay? Okay? In other words, he took the carnal, perfect piece of specimen that you are, amen? Tell your neighbor, go ahead. Actually, tell him, Pastor Everett, tell, tell Joanne. Tell her, say, Joanne, Pastor Everett is perfect in every way, okay? <laughs> but I'm going to tell you this morning that God made all of us perfect, okay? <laughs> I, I just need a little affirmation today. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, but so, so God made us perfect, but when, when we get saved, he remakes us perfecter, okay? In other words, he takes a perfect, perfect creation and remakes it better, okay? 
He makes it better because now I have been translated from carnal thinking, from carnal ways, to spiritual ways, to everlasting ways, to to, to a way that will take me all the way through eternity. Amen? I'm going someplace. Amen? I'm going someplace. I'm going someplace. I'm no longer thinking about just this moment and how I feel. I'm thinking about eternal things and where I will go in the end. Amen? My retirement policy is out of this world. Amen? It's so good when you think about that. It's it's so good. Amen? Amen. By faith. By faith. Hebrews 11, verse 6, and I always quote this verse, without faith, it is impossible to please God. (laughs) That means it's not what I see that pleases God. It's my faith. It's the verb. It's the action of believing God. Amen? When I don't see it with my eyes. Amen? That, that action, that, that action that our father Abraham used when he walked outside of a tent one day and God said, look at them stars. That's what we got to do. We got to see, see without seeing. Amen? See without seeing. We got to feel it without feeling. We got we to know it without knowing it because we know who he is. Amen? Without that faith, it's impossible. And then James says, I always, I want to just add this in. James says, show me your faith by what you're doing, okay? And, and David said, God created me a clean heart, okay? I'm just kind of tying those back together for us. Uh, a new thing will happen when I begin to flow, amen? When I let God flow through me, amen? I'm going to tell you today, it's a challenge because when you're presented with an opportunity to flow, the first, usually the first thing you're going to say is no, Okay? Because that's what happens to, it happens to all of us. Because we're too, we're, we're just, we, we like where we're at. We like, we like this, we like that. No, 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 I don't want to get uncomfortable. So I really don't want to flow anymore. I just want to sit. And I want to do. Hmm. Hmm. We will not see it first. We must do it first. Amen? Do, it, do what God is saying first. And then you'll see it. Amen? Let me just tie a, a little bow on this, okay? Let me, let me tie a bow on it. And I want to I talk to you. Uh, this, this entire message, renew, is, is a message about reproducing, okay? That's what this, this message is about. It's, it's, it's a message uh, about reproducing. And, and in the context of the church, because the church is the bride of Christ, Amen? We are the bride of Christ. We, we hold the potential to reproduce, okay? God, God G, through Jesus Christ, gave a, give us, gives us the work, okay? In other words, the work of the kingdom of God is in Christ, amen? In other words, when I'm going to work for God, when I'm going to do, do the, work, the work of the kingdom, I'm going to work for Jesus, amen? And I'm going to tell you, sometimes we get confused about what that looks like and what that means, but... He's the one that assigns the task, amen? In other words, he already did it because he made you. He he gave you a purpose, and that's why we have to flow. We have to let the flow happen in our life so that that the kingdom can be built, okay? Okay? So we are the bride of Christ. I was was speaking to a young couple uh, just just this last week. Uh, We're going to do a a wedding on on a couple weeks from now, Uh, and uh, uh, this is a... Uh, a couple is this this guy this kid used to live in our house actually we took him in uh, he lived there and uh, uh, he uh, he uh, he lived there for I don't know a couple years I think it was but he was uh, uh, and and so it's really an honor for us to to perform a wedding and actually it was an honor for us to to speak into his life uh, way back then okay and and it's also an honor that we we you know get to actually marry them. And uh, uh, they're they're a really good couple, and I hope that sometime soon they'll actually come to church. Uh, and I was speaking to them uh, uh, very specifically, uh, and and I and I use I referenced this verse, but I didn't use this verse. I used another verse, which I'm not going to give you that verse right now. But I I, I want to I want you to think about it because when you think about a couple getting married, okay, because that's what happened when the, when Jesus died, he he became 
uh, uh, he, we are the bride, right? Jesus is like the husband, okay, because he laid his life down for the church. We are the bride, okay? In other words, we get the benefit of our husband laying down his life for us and providing for us all things that are needed, amen? He laid his life down. That's why I always say uh, the best kind of husband to ever have is a, is a dead husband, one that, one that is no longer worried about his self, but he's focused on the bride, amen? And we have the best husband. His name is Jesus, amen? As the church, uh, we're the bride, and he loves us. He's focused on us and our needs and our desires and what we need in our life. He's focused on us. And then I want to read in Genesis 4, verse 1, it says, And Adam knew his wife, and she, she conceived. And that's all I want to say about that verse. But when we think about that verse, and Adam knew his wife, we would think naturally that that was uh, 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 the two, two uh, in a physical sense, uh, they, they began to reproduce, okay? Uh, in a physical sense. But I want to say to you today uh, that uh, for us, standing here this morning, us listening, us, us here this morning, it's time for us to begin to understand our role, okay, as the bride of Christ is to reproduce. And the way that we re will reproduce is by, by knowing, okay? And if, if I remember my, my Bible good, it says in John 10, verse 27, it says, if my sheep hear my voice, right, I will know them and they will follow me. So they're, they're, they're the responsibility that I must come to in my life in my Christian walk, and, and I, I say this verse a lot, it's one of my favorite verses, is I must come to a place where I, I can hear, right? I can hear the direction that God is speaking to my life, into my life. The best way you're going to hear the direction is when you open the Bible and begin to read it, okay? You begin to read it. I don't care where you start reading it, it's in the covers, okay? You might go to Lamentation somewhere or Chronicles and just start reading some names that you don't understand. But I'm going to tell you, all it is is people after people after person after person at, at places and places and time that led to a place and a purpose that we stand in today and people that I don't even know who I stand upon their shoulders. I'm going to tell you that, that there is a plan and a purpose and God has shown us time after time after time after time, but we don't hear. See, we're not hearing. But I'm here to tell you this morning that I am not... I am, I am not, no longer wanting to, to just stand around, okay? I want to reproduce. Matter of fact, I went to, we went to a, a conference a few weeks back. I went up to the front altar, and I stood, and the, there was an apostle there. And I, I'm praying one of these days when we get 100, 150 people that we can afford to fly him over from Ireland, okay? And come over, and his name is, is Emmanuel. And uh, I, I would love for him to speak to us. But, but he laid his hand upon, upon my head, and he, he, and he said, he said, he said what, do you, what do you want? And I said, I want to reproduce. And I'm going to tell you this morning, that should be the desire of every one of us. We should be going around every single day. Amen? And we should be going around every single day with that plan. In other words, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to take what, God, what Jesus has given me, and I'm going to reproduce, because I know him. Amen? I know that I know that I know him. And I know that what he's done in my life has to be done in someone else's life because it's very precious to me. And I'm going to take it to whoever it is. It might, her name might be Betty. It might be whoever it is. But you're going to take what you have and you're going to take it around the world, okay? I don't care if it's through a camera. I don't care if it's next to the neighbor next door. I don't care if it's the person at the gas station. I walked, I walked in the gas station when we first started this place, and I walked in, and, and some 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 uh, girl was standing behind the counter, and she she flat out lied to me. I didn't know if she can lie to me at the moment, but I said I said to her, I, she said, "What are you guys doing today?" And I said, I said, "Well, you know, we're we're, we're starting a church, and we're we're going to be in down the street, and it's just, it's just a gas station right down the corner. You guys stop down there to BP on the way home, and go in there. I don't know if she's still there or not, but and she said she said." Uh, well, where's the church at? What do you, who, and I told her that I was the pastor. And she said, oh, what's your name? And I said, I said, Pastor Everett. She said, Pastor Everett? And I, and I thought, right there I had her, you know. She's going to come to church, right? And so then, then I go, I go, yeah, we're you know, 10 a.m. on Sundays. And all, I'm going to come there. And I said, I turned to walk away after I got to talk in her. I got to the door and I went back and I said, pinky swear? I held out my pinky. And she said, pinky swear. And she took my pinky. Okay, but she, she broke the pinky promise. She never did show up, okay? And I'm going to say that's a 
that's really bad. I don't think God is even going to appreciate that at all because everybody knows the pinky promise you can't break it. Okay? So someday I'm going to see her again and I'm going to hold out my pinky like this. And I'm going to go like this. Okay? But I'm going to say I forgive you because that's what Jesus would do. <laughs> I think Jesus is asking us today I made you a promise and I'm not going to break it I'm just waiting for you I'm waiting for you that's what he's saying I want to reproduce. Matthew 28 says, Go ye therefore into all the world. And just before that it says, All things in heaven, in earth, and beneath the earth have been given into my hand. I have all power, Jesus says. And then he says, He says, now think about this. He has all power. Right? And he gives it to who? The church. I got, the, I got all the power. He says, what do you need? He says, I got it. Okay? And we walk around like we don't got no power. Like we ain't got no this. We ain't got no that. I would be better if this would happen. I would be there if I, if blah, 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 blah. I got all these excuses. And Jesus is saying out there with his pinky, he says, I promised you, I have all power. In a little finger. Yes. And he says, go ye Therefore, into all the world, preach and teach and make disciples and, and go to the nations, go everywhere, go all over the place and start right here, right now, today. Why do we got to wait? Why do we got to wait? If the church only looks at itself, it will never reproduce. Let me give you another picture. If the bride just stays in front of the mirror looking at herself, oh, I'm so beautiful, I'm so awesome, I got a great personality, look at my hair, okay? She will never be able to reproduce. She must focus on her man, right? And I'm going to tell you, the bride, the church, must focus on Jesus Christ or, or we will never reproduce. Yes. Yes. We will never reproduce. It's never going to happen. It's, never, it's always going to be the same. Yes. It's going to be like the good old days. It's going to be just like it. I'm only going to remember the highlights. The church has to stop looking at herself and start looking at her husband. Her name is, his, and that's Jesus Christ. And you know what? You will, you will reproduce. Amen? See, this is an evangelistic message, okay? Evangelistic message, okay? And it starts here and now. Amen? See, I wish we could say that. Maybe we should get a t-shirt and say, say, purpose is to reproduce. That's your purpose. Reproduce. 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 Just reproduce. You know, you don't even have to work at it. You just got to be the church, right? Be the bride. <laughs> reproduce. I'm, let me, can I tie that back into something? Let me just plug it back in. I plug it back in. It starts when you begin to flow, right? Begin to flow out of you what God has put in you. Let it flow, Okay? It might start with a little trickle, okay? It might start with a, just a little, and pretty soon it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and we become the river, right? That's what we always want. We always talk about that. If I stand in the river with a little cup, you remember that, right? Stand in the river with a cup, how fast does it fill up when I dip it in? Right away. If I, get, if I get a glass, how fast? Right away. If I get a bucket, right away. If I get a, a minivan, cut off the end of a minivan, and dipped it in there, how much fast? It would fill right up right away. If I got a container, right? If I got a ship, it would fill up because the river keeps on flowing. Right? And we're not, we're not supposed to contain what God has given us. We're supposed to let it go through us. And we become the river. 
The purpose of all of this is to reproduce. Amen? Let me just pray for us. <clears throat> Father, Lord, I just thank you. If you can stand with me. Father, Lord, I just ask, God, that you would touch everybody under the sound of my voice right now, God, and that you would, you would uh, forgive us of our sin, forgive us of our, our old thoughts, God, and Lord, create in us a clean heart this morning. And Lord, I just pray that you would restore to us the joy of our salvation and that you have provision for us enough to reproduce. And Lord, I just ask right now that you would help us, God, uh, uh, help us to look at you again, Lord, fresh and new. Turn our eyes off of whatever it is, Lord, and help us to begin to look at you. And Lord, I, uh, we lift your name up in this place. We lift your name up in this place. And Lord, we just ask that the Spirit of God would come and do a, a perfect work in our life. And Lord, create in us a new, a new. Create us a new. Lord, translate us, Lord, from where we are or where we were. God, translate us to a new place, God, that you can be, you can be, uh, have honor and glory and praise. And Lord, that one more soul would be saved. Lord, put, place it in our heart, Lord. Place it in our mind. I do what I do. I flow how you ask me to flow so that you can see another life change, Lord. See another soul saved. See another miracle happen in someone else's life, Lord. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. Uh, stir us up, Lord. Raise us up. Uh, help us, Lord, in every, in every area, God, of our life. Uh, uh, help us to have a desire. Lord, I know that the, the desire to know you comes from you. And so, Lord, I ask that you stir up in us the desire to know you. Hmm. The desire to hear your voice again. Hmm. In the morning, speak to us, Lord. At noontime, speak to us, Lord. In the evening time, Lord, speak to us. At nighttime, Lord, speak to us. Especially, though, Lord, right now, speak to us. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' name, Lord, I pray. And I ask that you'd bless everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can we just give him some praise this morning? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm expecting, amen. <laughs> I'm expecting, amen. I'm expecting. Tell your neighbor, I'm expecting. Just say it, Pastor Everett's expecting. Okay, it's okay. We're expecting, okay, that we're going to reproduce. Amen, amen, amen. God is good. God is good. <laughs>